<laughs> yeah, so this is one of those things that uh, kind of run into a lot in Dragon Quest is you try to use debuffs and they work like half the time if you're lucky. Oh, how the heck do I get over there? It's probably a late game thing. Okay, give me some more shiny stuff. Two iron and a copper. About what I figured. So I think we just have to go to the direction that didn't take us to the crypt, and that'll put us on the path to Galopolis. I haven't had one of these in a while. I hope nobody framed this robber rabbit. Bonk. Please die. Oh, not even. I gotta say, that is some top-notch water. I, I know I commented on this probably an embarrassing amount, but... I appreciate well-made water. It, it's It's been a long time since, uh, you know, Doom and Quake had uh, simple textures for water. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, there'll be a guard here. Oh, and then this guy. Wait, what? Ah, here we go. Now we find these things. If I remember correctly, there's an, this is an entire section of the game that'll be in 2D. Which is kind of fun. And I believe it'll be a bunch of reprises of stuff from the older Dragon Quest games. Yep, there we go. 2D mode. So this is something that was added in the uh, definitive edition. What is it they said in uh, Dark Souls? The flow of time is distorted? Something like that? See, at least here, time is sort of a whole sort of wibbly, massive wibbly wommy 
wimey, tiny, wimey stuff. <laughs> okay, those sprites are something. <laughs> Oh, hey, free in. That's the best kind. Oh, a church. Well, let, let's get out of there. My skin starts burning when I get in one of those for too long. Hell yeah! <laughs> Fuck your pots. One day, I will rid the world of all of these insidious pots and barrels. Oh, it even has the Dragon Quest 1 bumping noise. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> okay, we've got a bar. Truly. The absolute crimes that barrels have committed are just not numbered. Oh, they're back. My quest will never end. Don't worry, you're safe from the pots and barrels now. Okay, I guess I'll go talk to this mayor. Oh, do I have to go this way? Passwords. God. Okay, so basically, if I find any little weird tentacle monsters, I can talk to them and they'll give me a thing that'll let me uh, enter the, one of these things, enter one of these books. Ha! Alright, we do get one to start. That's cool. Galen Home. Okay, so. That will probably be the city from Dragon Quest One, where the Bard Galen, uh, his silver harp was buried. <laughs> oh god, Dave, we got the music for when you're in a dungeon. Although, oh, <laughs> and the transitions, it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's adorable. Okay, let's burn them. And uh, do a little bonking. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, when you go there in Dragon Quest 3, it's just a house that his parents are living in. And like, oh god, where's our sun gone off to? Um... Oh, jeez. Oh, just a she slime and a Drackey. We can just press A till they all die. God, so many hours of this music. 
Dragon Quest 1 is the first game that I made a conscious decision to own, so it's very nostalgic for me. I think I've gone on about this before. Oh, The Liar of Ire. That's right. In, in the original American release, it was just called The Silver Harp. In later translations, they called it The Liar of Ire. And the only thing it did is you could play it and you would be attacked by a random monster. Uh, but the monster usually wasn't very high level, so it was not terribly useful for grinding. A lamplight. Well, that was weird. It told me I acquired something, and now I don't see it in my inventory anywhere. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, and in the first game, there's a secret passage. There's basically just a wall of darkness up here. And if you bumped into it anywhere except in one specific spot, you wouldn't, uh, oh geez. You wouldn't do anything. You wouldn't go through it. You'd just hear the bumping noise. Uh, let's sizzle them. And... Yeah, she'll just do some bonking. Okay, if even Serena can one-hit these things, that that's good news for me. <laughs> I think it was a cheese wizard. <laughs> Yeah, the only use of the silver, well, Lyre of Ire, was you could trade it for the Staff of Rain, which was uh, one of the MacGuffins needed to... <clears throat> one of the MacGuffins needed to get to the castle at the end of the game. Oh, wait, no, wait. I want Veronica to actually hit this thing with some... with some fire. Oh, so, yep. Yeah. That's a pretty reasonable use of the wire, actually. <laughs> okay, we'll just keep beating on this guy. Um, and take out his little buddies. Sort of, yeah. I kind of wish I had any idea um, how far along I was in in terms of this guy's hit points. 
because he's taking a beating. <gasps> ah! Okay, so only Veronica is physical fizzled, so that's not too bad. I don't like it, but it's not that bad. dead. Oh, that's a lot of eeps. I'm sorry, there's a dungeon right here? Oh, come on, game. Can't do me like that. Alright, well, I guess I'll give the old man the, uh, the liar. Well, I guess we'll just have to keep an eye out for uh, little tentacle guys, and we'll come back here as needed. Oh, hey, the town is functional again. That's cool. Oh, I, I can't actually use the inn. How about the uh, weapon shop? Ah. Okay, well, I guess we're not going to explore the rest of uh, Elfgard today. Alright guys, I fixed time. Are you happy now? Veronica's our healer, so let's give her that little bonus defense. Oh wait, Veronica's not the healer, healer Serena is. I'm just very foolish. Alright, this guy, what's your deal, man? Hmm. Well, I guess that cave will become important later. Uh, let's take a quick nap at the end. Yeah, they, the health bars are, um, they're so useful that I miss them when they're not around. That was one thing I liked when I first played uh, Mega Man 2, is the bosses of every level had a little health bar. So you had some idea how you were doing. Allegedly we have. Okay, so we have 25 of those to find, so it looks like we'll be going back there fairly frequently. Oh, good, a safe spot. <laughs> I can't believe it's so late already. Although I didn't get to start until almost 8, so I guess that makes sense. Um, I 
Order's a bullshit guard, come on. Okay, we've got ourselves a nice shiny little desert here, and a whole crap ton of mobs. And new materials. I'm gonna go grab some of those before I go into the city. Lots of shiny stuff over here. Oh, and a chest just sitting there. Awesome. What's in the box? Oh, a mini metal. I don't even know how many I found it. I'm not even going to look. Alright, what do you got? So we got some iron, copper, and gold. Hey, that's not too shabby. Let's fight a chimera. Oh, wait. It's funny because, depending on the game, these are either very, very easy or fairly difficult. Uh, in Dragon Quest 3, you don't run into these until the end game, and they're worth a disproportionately high amount of experience. In this, this is only like a third region we've traveled to, and we're we're just slapping them around. Now let's see if the disproportionate experience is the case. Uh, 130 is not a lot. <laughs> It's better than a kick in the teeth, though. Hmm, beast bone. I wonder what those are going to be used for. for the Yggdrasil branch. That's why we're here, in case you've forgotten. Oh, let Mr. Moody no fun go off on his own if he wants. <laughs> There's nothing... Well, I guess we can explore the town a little bit, see if anyone has interesting, anything interesting to say. The Sultan. Go figure.
Yep, so we're going to have to go hunt a, uh, a rare cactus. Uh, as for now, though, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, the intermission will be accompanied by three minutes of ads in order to prevent pre-rolls. Please stand by. Won't be long. <laughs> 